Welcome to today's video. It's a really lovely one. We're doing an art haul. Okay, so I wasn't planning to do a video this week. I was just going to have a rest, but here we are. I am really excited about this one. I hope you guys really like it. So there's a lot of beautiful products and kind of different and interesting things in this haul. There are a few watercolors and some exciting new, new to the scene watercolors as well. But let's just start by going through this little pile here. So this is French Grey Earth by Greenleaf and Blueberry and this one here is Incarnate One by Crema. So and you can see here that I normally just cut this in half with an exacto and put it in a half pan for this palette here. So a lot of the watercolors that I've been buying this year are just replacements really for ones that I have been using a lot like these two. Um, I think I've gotten a new Sedona and yeah just kind of more replacements but we'll swatch those out here and then we also have three exciting new ones at the end as well. So you can see these are both really soft colors and yeah just very very lovely transparent and that's kind of how I've been really enjoying colors lately so I will talk about the paintbrushes in a little while but these are some tools for wood cutting or um, lino cutting and these are file tools so they're made in Switzerland they're just really really beautiful so my idea has been to um, we talked about it a little bit in the recent of the recent video about starting a new sketchbook um, making some prints and using that with watercolor as well so we'll see how that goes and pretty exciting but this here is a new sketchbook. This is from Indigo and Artways. It's actually a um, accordion sketchbook, so it just kind of keeps unfolding like this. And this is a new one for like the plein air, like the we talked about it in the last video. So kind of I I've just been doing these quick sketches when I can, and yeah. Um, you can see like you can flip it around and start from the back and then kind of go along the back as well so I've just swatched out one of my plein air palettes here just to kind of see how the uh, this one here how the paper absorbs the color how the color sits on the paper and things like that so yeah I was really happy with that and yeah it's just a very nice this is an a5 size they also offer an a6 one more of like a little pocket size but it's just a very nice kind of an interesting way to explore the landscape or explore a sketchbook so <laughs> i can also turn it that way and do them across as well so the next thing we're going to talk about oh hold on sorry Okay, where were we? She wants me to come outside. Um, but yeah, so we talked about in one of the recent videos, we were talking about Claire Basler and her oil drawings in the comments. And one of you mentioned going to the art store and picking up a, like an oil painting pad and an oil stick. And I had these oil sticks from a few years ago and I've been wanting to kind of do something with them. But I thought that was such a great idea. So I couldn't wait to also try this out. So I have those two, um, the Arches one and the Stonehenge one to try them. And they're both beautiful. So they're long staple cotton so that the, and then they must be, they must have something else on them as well to kind of, um, 
protect the cotton from the oil paints but you can see here like these are some oil sticks and oil paints and yes yeah, so you just kind of peel the once they dry you peel that off with a palette knife and then you can kind of use the stick so I didn't really peel much off here I'm just kind of showing you uh, what you can do and kind of just testing them out on this paper but yeah it's very very exciting so I also um, got this one out and I'm using I've actually gotten some onto the back of a palette knife here and I really like working with them like this so you'll also see a little bit more of this later on in the video um, yeah it's just a really nice way to kind of use them with the with the palette knife as well and yeah so this is kind of a new adventure and um, yeah we'll see how that goes but uh, this here is also something to do with the printmaking so this is a Woodzilla press and I got this one off Blick you can also get them off Speedball site and yeah this is just something really beautiful so this is an A5 size the mint green and yeah you can just kind of put the um, whatever you're kind of pressing in there we'll do a whole nother video and we will try a few different things as like mono printing and um, yeah a few different things but I also got this uh, so it's like a, a more of a traditional lino cut and you can see like I thought that I could uh, pull that up but I'm, I'm not sure that this block is a little bit too thick still so we'll have to see it's it's all every any kind of new um, thing that you try is always a bit of a bit of a struggle at first so I got these um, soft cut ones off Amazon because I thought that these might be easier to use and this is kind of the tool that I started with but then I quickly realized that um, to do kind of the fine detail that I wanted I needed like some better tools and also uh, I think that that is way too soft for kind of what I'm looking for to to create so yeah anyway I will link uh, Laura Boswell as well below if you're into printmaking you probably heard of her she does beautiful things I've been watching a lot of her um, videos and kind of learning about that but so here we have another little haul from Jackson's and one of these is watercolor there'll be two more that I'll show you with this range in a minute and then there'll be some other things so this here is Love Right Violet this is from a brand new range from Schmincke and it's the um, it's like a naturals range so it's all vegan and just a really um, like natural pigments they're all it's yeah I, I don't know it's very very interesting and it's a completely different range to their normal um, watercolors so they normally do the triple milled they're so soft and creamy they have a really beautiful product but I was really interested in this because this is kind of the the type of thing that I really like so uh, this is just a short handle da Vinci Casaneo brush so the Casaneo um, bristles are actually really nice to use and then this is a Tintoretto travel brush but it's a very unusual one you can see like here it's kind of like a, a long sword dagger brush and so you just take that out it kind of folds into itself and we I will use this in an upcoming video but this is it looks like a little bit like a goldfish tail when you put it in the water there so uh, yeah but so I have not put these into half pans yet so I just kind of squeeze them and I'm just using them from the tube this is a beautiful version of a violet earth it's got quite a uh, soft it's a softness to it when when it dries it's a little bit almost milky but it's quite transparent so it's quite unusual in that way I'm just uh, swatching it here comparing it to the hematite violet so that you can kind of see the difference there it's it's a softer color I think quite a lot of things in this new range for them are softer pigments and it kind of that more natural range but these were sold out everywhere I mean these just came out I didn't see the site until probably a couple of weeks after they came out I found 
that one on St. Louis Art Supply. And then I did, was able to get a couple couple more, but I think St. Louis Art Supply just restocked them. But So what I'm showing you here, uh, also a, a pretty new product to the scene. I think these came out late last year. These are from Schmincke as well. They're the Norma Blue um, Water Soluble Oil Paints. So... This is so exciting and it's such a game changer here. So uh, they don't have a smell. So I've been using these in just on my desk and normally I can't use oil paints because they're just, the smell is far too intense. And yeah, so I've, I've kind of been waiting till I could do an outdoor kind of plein air setup. But um, this is just a total game changer. So these... Yeah, they're, they're just really beautiful to use. Uh, again, like Schmincke does, does a beautiful product. And yeah, there was absolutely no smell. I didn't like get any headaches or anything like that. So I feel like this has, has been what a lot of us have been waiting for for a long time. So very, very exciting. And you can see there that like in the little kind of silver water tub, it is just water. I was going to... I. I bought the walnut oil to use that, but there's no need, like I can use the water really well. Um, I, I did read an article that said um, uh, she likes to use still a, you know, something like the walnut oil or something um, with them. But yeah, so anyway, it's it's really up for you know how you like to use it I'll, I'll link the article as well but it's just so exciting like to be able to have this kind of new and different way to do things so you can see here I have uh, mixed the colors with white and then on that row I, I kind of mix them all with the magenta so the top one so I'll also list the colors that I'm using here below it's magenta vermilion light it's the lemon yellow I'm not sure which this one is. It's like a, a, a light, the lightest ochre. And then I think that's burnt sienna. So yeah, but you can see here like just straight away you can get these beautiful different um, colors and mixes. It mixes really well. You can get these really fine sheer kind of applications. A lot of the ones that I got here um, I think I'm a bit more transparent, which I really like as well so yeah this is very exciting and um something really different and and nice to be able to kind of use oil paints and think about it in a different way i think um this channel is not going to become about this it's still going to be mostly watercolor but it just is very nice to kind of have that um yeah, just a different way to think about things. You can see here that I am using the palette knife. And again, I've just gotten a little bit of the oil stick uh, because I didn't want to use the paintbrush with the oil sticks. You can't use just water with these. So you need a medium to rinse them off. So I'm just using the palette knife here and I just really, really loved it. I loved mixing with it. I loved kind of painting with it. The two oil sticks that I'm using are the Ultramarine Blue Pale and the Phthalo Green Pale from RNF, and they just make such a beautiful product again. But uh, yeah, this oil pad, so this is the Stonehenge one, and it's just really lovely to use. So one of the things I think that has been kind of a little bit holding me back probably from starting the oils is just what substrate to use, like um, do I want to buy canvases what canvases etc etc like it's again like when you when you're trying something new you've got to kind of try different products and yeah anyway this is just such a nice way to um, start and to try you can see that there's absolutely no oil residue kind of um, being absorbed into the paper there so again that's just really really nice and yeah I, if you have any tips or interesting things again leave it in the comments it's always so lovely I think we learn a lot and we talk about some really nice things in the comments I always get questions not questions but um, people saying how much they enjoy just being in the comments and it's a really nice place to be and I, I totally agree I love chatting with you there about 
you know, all, everything that we chat about. So, yeah, um, very, very, very exciting. And um, I think for some of you as well that may have like oil paint allergies and may have not been able to do that, this again will be like a, a game changer. So these here are some of the really large Sennelier oil pastels. These are the grand ones. And yeah, so I've collected just a couple of these because I want to use these as more of a ground or to block in uh, underneath other paintings. I've been really enjoying them like that, but it's it's I'm kind of going through the little ones too quickly doing it that way. So I got a few of these and you can see I'm just having a little go on this paper here just to see what it feels like kind of going on there. But again, if you have any... Um, tips or pros and cons or ideas about even using them with in conjunction with the oil paints I'm not sure yeah I don't really know a lot about that so uh, you can see that these are the oil pastels and I've put them in this little bento box I had them in like this large wooden box that they came in I just wasn't pulling it out so I moved them to here and I have been really really enjoying this it's a lot more portable um, yeah but this is I'll show you what I decided to end up doing with the box that they came in so it's kind of just been sitting there for a while but this week I actually pulled out my pastels and you can see that I have had a good nudge of these and um, so I've been kind of breaking off little bits and putting them in different areas or different containers and so I uh, yeah I, I got some of these what was kind of left I kind of broke what was left in half and then I've put those little bits in here and kind of made like a pochard box or like an outdoor plein air kind of situation here so that I can take these out I've been um, also like when I've been outside and kind of doing the watercolor I've been really wanting to do some pastel sketches of like the clouds and things so and you can see here I'm not sure I might just be putting like some pencils paint brushes maybe like the watercolor palette and just different things in the front I'm not really sure yet but I am really excited to kind of uh, use that and there'll be obviously like more updates about that um, as I use it but this one here is the art spectrum uh, it's like a, um, a ground for pastels so this is the rose gray color and I got this specifically to put on some of these pages here so that I can take this out with that pastel box and yeah just uh, work on it that way so here are a couple more of the uh, Schmincke Naturals range so this again is the Lovrite Violet. This is the one that we already uh, swatched, but I wanted to kind of show you this on. This is the Archer's uh, cotton paper. It's the cold pressed sketchbook. So I just wanted to show you it on here as well. And then this one here is the Still de Grand. So this is a really beautiful um, and interesting color. You can see it's like kind of a bit of a chartreuse color. And I felt like it might have that kind of nickel azo quality where it just takes over everything. So I uh, swatched it next to the um, incarnate one there and I kind of let them touch there so to see how far that would bleed into it. And it's actually holding its area really well. So I'm really impressed with that. And then this one here is the Celadona, Celadonite as well so it's a really soft green again um, I love just even these five colors together really beautiful yeah so I think that's about it uh, I think Millie is wanting me to go out with her uh, but yeah so very very exciting and just a really nice kind of little palette of colors there as well and yeah I, I did also uh, the Schmincke the naturals ones there I just pulled them straight out of the tube so I think they would be different if you kind of you left them in a uh, 
you know, put them in a half pan, let that dry as well. But here is just a really delicious cake we made for our dad's birthday. So it's an orange sponge cake, something. I will link it or list the, see if I can find the recipe and list it below. And we put some sugared oranges, like orange slices on there as well. So Millie is really enjoying her mornings and yeah I think that's about it for this video I yeah you'll see she's been loving getting treats and um, still learning and still growing and yeah doing really well and Rosie is still having a little bit of a hard time sharing us with her I think but yeah um, they are doing quite well together so it's not um like it's not strained anymore or like a struggle they're quite happy just to be there together so yeah uh i hope you guys have a really lovely easter and i will see you in the next video bye